This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Lately, I've been having an issue with uh, my Tesla account. Uh, maybe some of you clever folks out there are trying to hack my account. I don't know, but I'm getting this message that is saying I need to reset my password in because there's been too many login attempts. And it's weird because I've changed my password so many times because of this and I'm just kind of stuck. But it got me thinking and I think I discovered a major security vulnerability that affects any of us Tesla owners. Let's dive in. The first time I heard of a Tesla being stolen was when I saw this video here of some guys in the UK that basically cloned the key fob signal because it was made with a really kind of poor low level of encryption and then were able to unlock the car and drive away with it, including disabling the remote tracking, the mobile access. And so Tesla nor the person themselves can actually track it. Now, maybe potentially they could track it by the cell tower it's pinging because they have that built-in connection which you can't disable or currently can't disable but in any event, the key fob was insecure. So Tesla added a feature called pin to drive. This pin to drive feature allowed you to basically set up another pin code that you had to enter in the vehicle itself in order to, uh, to, to drive it. So no matter if you had the key fob or what, or even the key card for the Model 3, in the car you still had this pin to drive feature where you had to enter that, otherwise you couldn't go anywhere. So, you know, it kind of solved that problem. And then there were these white hat hackers in this contest called Pwn to Own. These are the good guys that are trying to find these vulnerabilities so the rest of us you know, can be protected from, from any issues there. They were able to take control of a Tesla Model 3 from a vulnerability in the web browser. Now I've complained about the browser in the past and this was just another example of that. So in response, Tesla is now updating the web browser to Chromium, which is the core that Google Chrome uses and now Microsoft Edge is also using to run kind of all the things that a browser needs to do. So it's exciting, you know, to see a company like Tesla, who is as much a software company as they are a hardware company, when a bug or some kind of security vulnerability gets exposed, they fix it, right? As the pin to drive feature showed us with the key fob hack, and now the browser update in the Model 3 after, you know, that contest that happened. With all that said, the thing I discovered, the thing I found was that with the username and password of someone, you can essentially steal their car and there's nothing they can do about it. All you need is a username and password. It doesn't matter pin to drive, it doesn't matter any fingerprint authentication in the app, none of that stuff matters if you have somebody's username and password. Now this could all be fixed, this could all be prevented if they enabled two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication, or just 2FA, as you'll see it written a lot of places, works by requiring a randomly generated PIN code when logging in from a new location or device. For example, if I go to my bank website and try to log in, I'll enter my username and password, then it will ask me for a PIN code which is randomly generated using a separate app that I've authorized to generate these codes. So I have to go get that PIN code and enter it as a second step for the login. But on the Tesla app, this doesn't exist. So if I had your username and password, I could just simply log into the app and find out exactly where you are, make sure it's the perfect time to take the car. Then I could just drive away with it. I could literally walk up to it, unlock it, enter keyless driving, and it'd be mine. So you may be thinking, what about that pin to drive feature? I have to have the pin to enter it, right? No because from the app you can disable this and in the car itself when you're doing the pin to drive when it pops up it says don't remember your pin enter your tesla credentials so you just need the username and password the pin to drive feature doesn't help protect against this at all so then you might be thinking well you know my my tesla account is secure right i have a different username a different password it's totally unique right right <laughs> Here is an experiment I did recently to show just how easy it is to get someone's Tesla credentials using a very common technique by penetration testing in the hacker community. Okay guys, so I'm here at a supercharger and I have this thing set up called a Wi-Fi pineapple. All it is is a fake Wi-Fi network that makes it look like you need to enter your Tesla credentials in order to, uh, to connect. And so the idea is could I actually get someone to log in with their Tesla credentials and take their car because that's all you need. All right, let's see if anyone actually connects. All 
right, we've got one. Okay, so we, we've got someone, I think they're gonna connect right now. I think he just connected. Oh man, oh man, here we go, here we go. Okay, okay, he's gone. Now, let's see what happens, he connected. All right, uh, I have his login. Um, let's, let's see if this works. <laughs> oh, oh, I am in. Okay, uh, uh, well, let's see if we can just flash the, flash the lights. <laughs> okay, um, let's go take it for a ride. Okay, all right, so he's not here. I need to drive it. Okay, keyless driving. So again, all I have to do is enter the Tesla password. Start. <laughs> okay. Bye. Where the hell's my Tesla? Where the hell's my Tesla? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? <laughs> okay, so yes, of course, that was just a dramatization. That was me and my friend Pat um, doing this kind of as a way to show how that would work. But what I showed there is a very real technique that black hat hackers use, those are the bad guys, to steal people's credentials. A common thing they do is we'll go to a public space like Starbucks, let's say, and pop this little thing out there and then anybody in the area will connect to it. It'll ask you for your username and password and boom, if that happens to be the same password you used for something else, like your Tesla account, they've got it. They've got everything they need to take your car and there is nothing you can do to stop it. Plus, if you're like one of the over 70% of people that reported using the same password for different logins, it might not even matter if someone steals it currently, they may already have it. And even if you do use different passwords for almost everything, there have been over 3,200 data breaches in the past three years exposing nearly everyone on the internet at some point or another. Seriously, anyone that's online has likely had their info leaked from one company or another. If you wanna go check, look at my friend Troy's website called Have I Been Pwned, and you can just pop your email in there and it'll tell you if you've been included in any of these 3,200 data breaches, that is something over seven billion user accounts in the past three years that they've been collecting. Go ahead and do it, oh wait, right here. Scary, right? Now. All of this could be totally solved if Tesla enabled two-factor authentication. And when I asked Tesla about this, unfortunately, they didn't have a great answer. They just simply stated they do not support multi-point or two-factor authentication at this time. I hope that that changes because for a lot of us, these cars are not just cars. They're something that, you know, now they're being built to last a million miles and could be revenue generating with the Tesla network and the fully autonomous option in the future. So this isn't just something, you know, that is disposable, like your cell phone or some of these other things that we're used to upgrading every couple of years. These things are made to last and can become investments for us. And so I think, and I hope they agree, I hope we all agree, that adding as you know a reasonable amount of security uh, to this system to help us protect our investments makes sense. And I hope it's one that they'll find this video and act upon. And if you'd like to help, uh, check out in the description, I have a tweet that I'm hoping everyone will send to them to kind of draw their attention to this video, because this is scary. This is not something that I ever intended to make a video on, but I just feel so compelled to do it because as I, I, everyone cares about this stuff. And, and I hope you agree that, that this is worth caring about. 
But what can you do? Well, there's kind of two things. One is to use a custom username and password just for this account. So that means creating probably a new email address or an alias of an email address or whatever. So that way it's not something that is commonly used. And you know, if your account was compromised, if you checked on have I been pwned, you probably know. Um, so it's not something else out there. It's totally unique for this and using a really complex password that is generated from some sort of generator. So you know, figure that out. There's lots of tools and ways. I'm not going to go into those details here. But the other thing is to use a VPN service when you're browsing the web. This is where today's sponsor, NordVPN, comes into play. NordVPN offers secure and private access to the internet. It's like having your own protected bubble when you're out there, so other people trying to steal your information can't get it. It allows you to protect all your devices, your Windows devices, your Mac, your Linux devices, Android and iOS, all across the same connection. And you're able to do that for just $2.99 a month. Now, one of the problems with most VPNs is that they're slow because essentially what you're doing is routing your traffic through a separate location. But NordVPN has over 5,200 servers in 60 countries and offer the fastest VPN experience in the world. So go check out NordVPN at nordvpn.com slash teslanomics. They get 75% off a three-year plan, making it just $2.99 a month. And when you enter code teslanomics at checkout, you get an extra month for free. And let me know what you think. I, I hope this helps. I hope you guys are inspired to contact Tesla and ask about this. I hope this inspires Tesla to actually enable this for us because it's not really that hard and it can really go a long way to protecting these investments that we all have. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. And don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you guys back in the next one. This is my friend, Pat Flynn. What's up? Uh, who has an awesome YouTube channel helping people learn about what, what, what's the tagline? I love it now. It's help people. Uh, help people make more money, save more time, and help more people. So go check him out. Um, I used his advice many years ago from his podcast, and it's super helpful if you're looking to get into YouTube or grow an online business or really just become an entrepreneur in any, any regard. So thanks, Pat, for coming out. Yeah, <laughs> thanks I for letting me this, steal uh, your car. Video helps you do what you want to do. And I don't want anybody to steal my Tesla for real, so hopefully they'll uh, listen and fix us. Yeah, yeah, they got to do something.